What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel for Webflow Pros. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a perfect horizontal scrolling section, link it up to a CMS so that no matter how many items are in the list, it's always going to calculate the correct distance to move those items and across every single breakpoint with us only having to use one Webflow interaction. So let's go ahead and build this. All right, let's get started by setting up our horizontal scrolling section. I'm gonna drag a div onto the page and this one for this tutorial is gonna need a very specific class of horizontal dash section. And then inside that, we're just gonna drag our container and then I'll give this container a combo class of sticky container, just since I'm using this container in other places. To create the illusion of a horizontal scrolling section, our container needs a minimum height of 100 VH, so it takes up 100% the height of the screen. And I'm just gonna quickly drop one Flexbox on this, so that way I can just align some of this content inside this container. Um, and then that's basically our setup there. So then the parent of that container would usually have a greater height than the container itself. So maybe like 300 VH. So it's three times the height of the screen. So that way the container can be positioned sticky and anchor it to the top. So the top would be zero pixels. So now what that's going to do is the container is going to stay at the top while we scroll past this horizontal section. So it's just kind of locking in place with position sticky. What I'm going to do is you go ahead and drag a collection list inside the container. Um, you don't have to use a collection list for this. You could just use divs in place of the list and wrapper and items. But um, I'm going to go ahead and link this to the collection list. And I'll give the wrapper a class of wrapper. You can really give that any class you want there. Um, I'll go ahead and give the list a class of list. You can give that any class there. Um, the item needs a specific class though of horizontal dash item. I'll go ahead and just paste my card design inside that item. So I want all these to stack side by side. So I'm going to give the collection list a uh, flex box, align uh, to stretch and justify to the left. And then the collection item, I'll give it a little bit of padding. So if you're going to create space between these cards, be sure to use padding instead of margin because um, it kind of affects the way the animation is set up. So I'll even give these items a width, maybe 40% the width of their parent. Because they're in a flex box, they're all being squished to say, stay inside that parent. But I can set the sizing to don't shrink or grow. And that's just going to force them to basically respect that whatever width we set right here. And then I'll adjust the width to where there's basically three items that are aligning kind of with that section right there. And that's doing the trick there. So anything that's a parent of these items needs a width of 100%. Anything that's inside our container. So the list and the wrapper uh, need that width of 100%. And it's inside this container. And that container has a bit of padding. Now, one thing you'll notice is we have horizontal scrolling here. So usually what I'd do to fix that is just grab the container's parent and set the overflow to hidden. The only problem is whenever overflow set to hidden on the parent of a sticky element, then sticky no longer works because none of the parents can have overflow hidden. Uh, so I'm gonna remove that overflow hidden there. Second option is to add it to the container itself. Only problem is when we're at a larger screen size than our container's max width, we're seeing that item being cut off there. And ideally we'd like to see it go all the way to the edge of the screen and just stop the scrolling here. So what I'm gonna do to fix that is just drag a div inside the horizontal section give it the class of sticky and make this my item that has position sticky, top of zero pixels. And then it's gonna have overflow hidden with 100%. And then the container gets to go inside that sticky item and the container doesn't need position sticky anymore. Um, so what that does is now we still have our position sticky, but we don't have our horizontal scrolling anymore. And that sort of fixes that. Let's go ahead and just set up kind of our interaction. I'm gonna apply it to the horizontal section for now. So I'll create an element trigger on this section. It'll be a while scroll into view applied to the class. And then we'll just create an animation and maybe I'll call this one something like scrolling. Um, and then what we'll do is go ahead and grab the collection list. So this is the thing we actually wanna be able to move. And then we'd set it to move 0% at first. And then we'd set it to move negative, uh, maybe something like negative 40% or something. And basically we just need to adjust this percentage to get those cards to line up to where that last card aligns right there. So now when I scroll up and down, 
which you'll notice is um, it's going to stop pretty much where that last card stopped. And now it did start scrolling before this section was completely in view. So to fix that, what I want my triggers to be is when element is fully visible and when element is fully invisible. Now the only problem with this is we move this over accounting to have exactly, I don't know, five, six, however many cards. What happens when we add another item to our collection list is that this animation is still going to stop here and we'll see however many more items we add hanging over the edge here. And we don't want to have to adjust this animation every time we add or remove collection items from this list. And we don't even want to have to create new animations on mobile because say we change the width of these cards on mobile, um, then we would have to change how far it moves the, the entire list. We want it to dynamically uh, calculate how far to move this based on how many cards we have in this list. Another thing that uh, kind of affects the interaction is the height of this horizontal section. So right now it's 300 uh, viewport height, but maybe I change this to 800 instead. What you'll notice is that it starts scrolling a lot slower, like super slow. I'm scrolling so fast and the cards are barely moving. Um, so the higher the height of the section, the slower the cards move. Um, so when we're creating this dynamically, we also want the height of the section to be calculated based on how many cards we have inside here. So that way the speed stays consistent throughout no matter how many items we add. We're going to be using custom code for a, a bit of that. So what I'll do is actually remove that height from the horizontal section. And then what we're going to do is go ahead and drag one more div. And it's going to go inside that horizontal section. And then it needs a very specific class of horizontal dash um, horizontal dash trigger. And then what I'll do is give it position absolute uh, to the top of its parent, which means its parent needs position relative. And then what I can do is remove that interaction I created while scrolling interaction and apply it instead to the horizontal trigger um, and apply this to the class. This can happen on all breakpoints. And then we can uh, check our same animation, make sure it starts when we're fully visible and fully invisible there. And then we can add a bit of smoothing however much we want to this interaction here. And then what we can do here is change the unit we're using to zero REM. And then this last one would be negative one REM. And our code's just going to tell this REMs uh, how far to move this based on how many cards we have inside. And then one thing you you noticed before probably um, is that whenever we scrolled past this, the cards uh, didn't stop scrolling soon enough. So the code will also fix that there too for us. Um, we can actually preview because we're going to be running JavaScript to calculate this distance. So we'll have to publish to see that this actually working. But what I'm going to go ahead and do is add this code to the site. So I'll leave this in the description of the video. You can just copy all this code and then paste it in the closing body tag section of your entire page. This uh, items in view variable that we created is just going to tell us how many items do we want to be in view. So for instance, if I switch this to two and I save and I publish this. So over here on the live site, now when I'm scrolling down past the section, it's not scrolling. Uh, that's because we do need to adjust one thing inside our interaction. And that's this needs to be applied to all elements with this class not just children with the class. So now when I scroll past the section, um, what it does is it locks those two cards in place right here, and I can easily adjust this. And maybe I only want it to be one item in view. And now when I scroll down, it stops right there when one item's in view. I can also adjust the speed of how fast I want. Now this is all relative to how many cards we have in, so the more cards we add, it's always going to maintain the same speed for us. But the higher the number, the slower the speed. So if I switch this to 2, we refresh back up at the top and scroll. Look how slowly these cards are moving now. And it still locks into view with that one card. So I think what I'm going to do for now is have this lock in um, maybe a little faster. 1.2 is fine for the speed. And have this lock in three cards in view since I have three cards inside my section. Now, I'll probably want to adjust this on uh, mobile, and I don't have to rebuild the entire interaction to do this. All I had to do is change the width of the items here using percentage. So I want uh, maybe two items in view. So two items are going to basically stay 
aligning with that bar there. And then maybe on this break point, I'll have one item, so I'll just increase the width here. And then to make sure that I'm not losing any of this card, I'll probably set the padding to something like four viewport width, so it gets smaller, um, kind of like that as the width gets smaller. And then here, I'll still leave that one item in view. So then when I come back over to my code, I can adjust the speed and how many items I want to lock into view for every single breakpoint. So this one's tablet, this is mobile landscape, and this is portrait. But say I only wanted it to lock in one item, one tablet, in this case I'll keep two, I can adjust the speed to whatever I want, and how many items we want to lock in and what speed we want for each one of the breakpoints. Um, and what I'll do is go ahead and inspect this. So what we're noticing, uh, this is tablet view right here, so when I scroll, See, it's keep going and it locks in those last two items right there for me. And it's maintaining the same speed that we had on desktop because that's the speed we have applied. If I reduce this to maybe a little bit of a mobile view and scroll down now, it locks in that very last item. And this is going to work no matter how many items we have. So if I were to unarchive this last item, it would still work. The beauty about this method is, is say that um, so right here we have three items in view. What if, for whatever reason, our collection only had three items or less? So what I'll go ahead and do is archive all of our items, but three, and then um, I'll go ahead and save and publish this. What you'll notice is now this section isn't scrollable whatsoever. So it basically doesn't have a large height. It uh, doesn't get sticky or fixed when we scroll. It's just acting like a normal section because there's no cards for it to scroll. So it's figuring that all dynamically for us. But on uh, mobile or even tablet, where we, obviously those three cards are gonna need to scroll, it still allows us to scroll. So it, it figures all that out for us of how high the section needs to be, the height, and how far that distance needs to be to make sure that our collection items are always perfectly working um, on every single breakpoint with only one interaction that applied. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to check out the clonable for this project in the description of this video to see how it's all set up. If you'd like to see even more advanced interactions, feel free to check out my Patreon page where we go over custom CSS and JavaScript solutions. I'll catch you in the next video. Goodbye.